This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and Empire Fight Store. Reunited with an old friend of mine, Mr. Idris Virgo, over the Zoom. One. Your brother. What are you saying? You forget to say the one, the only. Come on, bro. I know the you one, the only. One. The body breaker. The what? What else is it? You go. On, you can do the intro. The one, the only, the body breaker, Idris Virgo. <laughs> How's things, my bro? Uh, things have been good, man. Things have been good. How's things been with you? Yeah, good, mate. Can't complain. Um, let's talk immediately about you. Uh, what yeah. a ride it's been for the last couple of years. But you've got your big headline fight up in Newcastle against Aaron Chalmers. When just when you saw that announced, KSI and Mams, everyone put in the poster out. Must have been a real good feeling. Oh yeah, I was buzzing, man. As you know, man, it's been a rocky road just to get here. So for being main event in Newcastle. Um, to show everyone my skills and put sleep down to sleep. I, I just can't wait, man. I can't wait. What can we expect to see in this fight? We know that we've seen you in the past, personable, able to build a fight up. You've got something you can really get your teeth into this time. An opponent who's going to give it to you back and that will probably get the best out of you, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, he said his game's going to come forward, so I like, I like those type of opponents because then they could broadcast my skills and get that knockout. I don't want someone who's going to run away or clinch, just like Anthony Taylor. He clinched. I wouldn't say he ran, but he clinched more than he ran. So um, hopefully Sleepy Arm will come in this, come to this fight with that heart and we could have a nice total to fight and put a good show for the Newcastle fans. Aaron Chalmers has been online speaking a lot about other people, other fighters and stuff like that. Do you think in a weird way he's overlooking you or or trying to bypass you or, or detect attention from the fact that he is going to be the one in the ring with you on the 23rd? Yeah, 100%, 100% he's trying to detect that attention. He's, caught, he's coming with the same Anthony Taylor kind of vibes, saying, oh, I'm going to beat you, X, Y, Z. I'm like, mate, he deep down knows he's got one year left. And he knows he's not going to win this fight, but he's got to pretend and he's got to give himself false confidence for him to believe that he's got a chance when he hasn't really got a chance. Then again, I'm not overlooking Ar- um, Sleepy Aaron at all. I'm not overlooking him at all. You never do that. You never overlook an opponent. So I know I'm getting myself into, but I'm confident of what I can do. And I think deep down inside, he, he knows he, he, he's got a lot late to handle. And when he first feels that first jab in his face, he's going to know. What did you make of his last fight on uh, on Kingpin? To be honest with you, I actually thought that was kind of kind of like a decent fight. Um, that Keith guy was a bit too much for him, um, too much power. But other than that, I thought it was quite a decent fight. He showed he had a bit of heart because he got up from the knockdown and he had a standing up count and he ended the fight. So I'll give him that. But it was a good fight all in all, to be honest with you. He impressed me in that fight because against Floyd Mayweather, I'll probably say was a bit kind of a bit shifty because Floyd is what fifty odd? Is he fifty, Floyd? Yeah, got to be getting that way. He is, yeah. So Floyd's about fifty odd, and you couldn't put an old man down. I don't care his exhibition, showcase your skills. But um, yeah, we'll see on September the twenty third when I put him to sleep. I think if you were given the opportunity to have an exhibition against someone like Floyd Mayweather, we know he's one of the greatest of all time, but you would have made a, a more assertive a, a performance, something that people would maybe perhaps remember and look back on a bit more? Yeah, 100%. I'll give people like a meal deal. They'll always remember because no way I'm going to make Floyd walk me down and like embarrass me in front, front of people. It doesn't make sense. Like, you're old, man. I'm a fresher kid, like, Science doesn't allow this to happen, so um, I wish that fight could happen next round. Yeah, not sleepy out out. Floyd might think, Oh, I'll take this kid out, I'll fight him. So, hopefully, I'll get that fight next. That'd be great. What would happen if you fought Floyd Mayweather? I would knock him out, I would be the first guy to knock Floyd out. <laughs> I don't care, man. I'll knock the guy out, man. <laughs> Oh, my God. I suppose a build-up like that would be something that sort of... I suppose once you've got that Floyd Mayweather fight, you're doing misfits, you're doing stuff like that, that would be dream achieved, the real icing on the cake. Yeah, 100%, man. 100%. Nice cake of icing, man. Idris, let's uh, let's talk just a little bit more the intricacies of this fight. How easy was it to make? Obviously, it's September 23rd, not too far around the corner. How much notice did you have? Because it was only really announced within the last couple of weeks, but we believe it was sort of in the pipeline for a hot minute. 
I don't know. I didn't have loads of notice because he was meant to fight Jack from um, Love Island. So I believe they were meant to fight in um, soon. Um, obviously, Jack said he couldn't fight um, Aaron for what reason. Jack says a freaking pussy mind my lounge. Um, yeah, that's another guy I want to fight. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> that didn't happen. And funny enough, Aaron actually said he, he wouldn't mind fighting, especially in Newcastle at, um, as a main event. That's his hometown. So um, I would say it was in the pipeline, but I didn't have loads of time to prepare. But um, you know me, man. I'm always in the gym. I'm always staying ready. So um, it's a good thing. that uh, And that good saying, a catchphrase, always stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So I didn't have to get ready because I, I was ready. So, um, yeah, man, this is great timing. Does it bother you at all that it's in his backyard or sort of I've seen you before, you sort of like to be under the lights, under the pressure, have everything against you. That doesn't ever really bother you. You're quite happy going into that sort of environment. Yeah, 100%. I just love it because I'll turn his Newcastle fans, his fans into my fans. So when I get into Newcastle, I'll be a superstar. I'll be like, I'll be like a um, Floyd Merriver in Newcastle or like, like in Miami. So me going to his turf in his back garden, I love it, man. I'll fight him in his back garden. I'll fight him in Mars. I'll fight him in um, Pluto. i fight him in my back garden. I'll fight him anywhere. I'll fight him in the kitchen if he wanted it. So um, Newcastle, why not, man? Get some Newcastle fans. Go for it. Idris, finally for me on this fight, before I ask you a few on the, on the sort of crossover world as a whole, um, yeah. what happens when you get in the ring? Saturday the 23rd with Aaron Chalmers. Are you expecting there to be anything that he can bring your way that you can't deal with? No. Um, when I get to the ring on September 23rd, I'm expecting to knock the guy out. He can't bring nothing new to the table. Uh, about, what, 13 fights? I've been through everything. I've been through loads of sparring. I've been through... There's nothing new he can bring to the table. Um, unless if he cries in the ring. That would be, that'd, that'd be the first. Making the guy cry. But uh, other than that... I just don't see him bring anything new to the table. But then again, never overlook a fighter. So I'm still going there. No, I still got to be rare because you, you just never know what he can do. Talk about iron sharpening iron and sparring. KSI is a man that you get many arounds with. Um, yeah. He's got his fight coming up with Tommy Fury. Um, I know that that's a fight that you've wanted yourself for a long, long time. He goes into this fight as a, as an underdog. If you look at it from a boxing world perspective, I spoke to Eddie Hearn and he said to me, look, never write off KSI, but a lot of people uh, do favour Tommy going into this one. Can JJ do it? You've spent a lot of time around him, shared a lot of rounds with him. You've always told me one-on-one -on -one when we've just spoke as friends that he's a lot better than anyone gives him credit for. That's a secret. What do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> now, but yeah, hundred percent. Like people, people under us underrating um, JJ is is crazy because the power he holds and the fitness he's got is just like out of this world. Like in training, he's pushing me. So um, Tommy's got to be training hard. If he's taking this lightly, like it's gonna be the end of Tommy. He's gonna he's gonna retire Tommy because. I, I do believe KSI is just going to embarrass Tommy on um, October the 14th. Seriously, man, it's, it's crazy, man. I can't wait for that fight. I cannot wait. What would it mean to the Fury legacy if Tommy Fury was to lose against, as KSI keeps saying in his videos, a YouTuber? I think Tommy Fury would then turn into a YouTuber and then he'll start doing YouTube because... That legacy will be done and dusted. Like it will be embarrassing for always. It would be embarrassing for him, but at the same time, KSI has been putting in the work in like a profession anyway. So, um, in my eyes, I don't see KSI as a YouTuber. You know what I mean? I see him as a full-on professional, like athlete, boxer. But um, as soon as he loses, as soon as um he loses, Tommy loses to um KSI. It's just yeah, I can't wait. It's just gonna be amusing. You know what I mean? I, I wouldn't even call Tommy after that because KSI is embarrassing. He's done the job, done and dusted, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. Idris, I know that uh, you're someone who can appreciate a bit of trolling. There's been a lot of hype around this Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis fight. Uh, firstly, has it gone too far? Yeah, I think it has gone. <sighs> yeah and no, but you, you can't listen to it this way. That's his bird, and you've got to do your research in your bird, you know what I mean? You've got to do your research on who you're getting, getting with. And being in the public eye, you've got to know that like, people use that against you. 
So for um, Logan Paul to realise like Dean Elias won't do that and he has done that, like it's gone far, but at the same time, the question I've got for you, Charlie, if that was your missus, would you still marry it? <laughs> I said to <laughs> someone, I said you've got to be doing a thorough CRB check first. Exactly, bro. It's just, I don't know because it was me. I just don't know how I'm going to take that one. You know what I mean? It's, it's, oh, no, it's a tricky one. <laughs> Can Dylan Dennis beat him? And what would uh, I, I know? I think Logan does go into that fight a favorite. There are sort of sparring footage and, and stuff of, of Dylan posted. It, it doesn't look great. We know that he he's BJJ. He's not ever really been a stand up fighter. But if Logan was to lose, along with everything that went on with it, it'd be pretty devastating, right? Oh, Logan, Logan cannot lose that fight. If he loses that fight, oh my gosh. He changed his name to Logan Dallas, man, because <laughs> <laughs> he can't lose that fight, man. He's got too much on the line, but he might go in that fight too angry as well, and that might unpropose him, compose him. So um, he's got to be careful that he goes in there with calm mind and do the job, because if he loses the dinner's done, oh, man, if he loses, man, oh, I feel sorry for him. <laughs> I can I mean, tell. If she doesn't marry him after that, if he loses... That would be just harsh. Oh, <laughs> internet breakup. Um, yeah. Idris, as always, thank you for your time, brother. Good to catch up with you. I'm sure I'll see you so soon uh, in person. We'll be rubbing shoulders. Just a final message ahead of your fight with Aaron Chalmers in Newcastle, in the backyard. None of that's going to bother you. Yeah, it's not going to bother me. You already know the one, the only on, on September 23rd, I'm going to put a spectacular performance out. I'm the A plus fire, he's a C plus fire. And I go into his backyard and I'm going to embarrass him in front of his crowd. Let's go. <laughs>